days. We love the Heavenly Father. Let your will be done. Perform it, my God. Find the people with their hearts like that of David. Find the people, my God. Find the people, oh Lord. Look for people to walk with, oh God. Here we are, oh God. We surrender to you and say, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are most welcome. Oh, Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. You are most welcome to this revival hour. Well, we, we have not been on for some days. We have been in prayers. We have been in a, a, in a national peace. National Peace Prayers Caravan in Kenya. It is very, very important to pray for our nation. And uh, I've been in that prayer caravan, prayer movement all over the nation of, Car of Kenya for a number of days. And uh, the prayer caravan, that prayer movement is still going on within the nation of Kenya, praying for revival, praying for peace. And it will be crowned on the 28th of, of May uh, at Kasaran, ground with the with a ceremony assembly. Kasarani. Kasarani. Okay, now let us have a word from above. Father, bless your word. Thank you so much for your word. Send your spirit upon us, O Lord, so that within these few minutes, you'll be able to transform somebody's life and bring light to some to somebody. Let us go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Our message is uh, uh, has a heading of making the making of a revival great army. Revival great army. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says and the Lord formed the man of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being maybe due to the to the time we have I can excuse my interpreter thank you so much Madam Joan, God bless you. Okay. We are reading in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God form, formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. A living being. Okay. God, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. This living being got a garden and began in that garden of Eden. Okay, let us go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 
37, Ezekiel chapter 37, where, where we have been for some time. We may read from, from verse 1 to verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 37, from verse 1 to verse 10. The hand of the Lord came upon me. That's the testimony of Ezekiel. And he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones. And he said to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put snooze on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and a suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, O son, son of man. And he said to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come, from the four winds, O breathe, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, their feet, an exceedingly great army. Great army. This great army is a great army of revival. It is a great army coming from death, coming from dry bones, coming from a backstage church. Can God get anything out of a backstage church? Can God get something worthy out of a dead church? Yes, God is able to raise a great army out of nothing people, out of backsliders, with God, all things are possible. There is nothing impossible. He's a lizard eye, he's omnipotent, he's able to do things that we cannot even imagine. Can you imagine a great army coming from dry bones? I, I believe with us human beings, once somebody dies, well, somebody may say, maybe he's still sleeping. But when he becomes cold, oh, maybe they can call upon a prophet or a man of God to come and do something to raise that person. When he, 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 he stinks, when he rotens like Lazarus, for us, many of us have lost hope. And by the way, many times they don't wait for people to get rotten. They bury them immediately after this. People think of where to bury. Now, there is a state of dry bones. Dry bones refers to somebody who died a long time ago. An army of God which died a long time ago. An army that has not been able to perform the will of their captain. They are, they are not able to defend their nation. They are doing nothing. And a problem 
which comes upon the nation, a dry bones army, cannot do anything, cannot help. It looks as if there is no army. Actually, there is no army according to my natural mind. If the army dies to a level of dry bones, at least the cop says. But dry bones, a, a dry bones army, is it, nothing. Maybe that's how the church has been. Many people have been talking about the church negatively. Or even you or me. Maybe of being a backslider of many years. Maybe of given up. No, there is hope. Dry bones army can come back to a living army of God. There is, a, there is an anointing. There is a way God can transform dry bones army into revival army, into a living army. That living army which comes from dry bones, allow me to name it a revival army. If it was a great army like this, which died and became bones, and then when God turns them back into living army, allow me to call it a great revival, a, what? a revival great army. Oh, great revival army. I'm telling you, soon you are going to see a great revival army. You are going to see a revival that will bring up a great army from nowhere, from backsliders, from people who are demonic now. Well, many people are complaining. Many people are crying for the church. There is no church. The church has a backslidden pastors, apostles, prophets. Oh, oh, we have nothing. Oh, oh, the Lord of that army, the Lord of that army has a plan to revive his army. Revival is coming. Revival is coming. The army, the arm of the Lord is coming back. I'm telling you there is hope. Dead people can live again. Dry bones can live again. They took Ezekiel to the valley and asked him, can these dry bones live again? Ezekiel could not say yes, no. It was too hard to believe. There are certain things which are very difficult to believe. Ezekiel says, no, I can't tell anything, but you know. I love that. If you don't know, don't think that it is not possible. It is better to refer it back to God because he knows. Listen to this. I love this man, Ezekiel. Uh -huh. he, he give the testimony. Verse, verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out, of the spirit, out in the spirit of the Lord and he set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? That is a fundamental question. That is a very great question. So I answered you, O oh Lord God, you know. That is a very wise answer. In other words, Ezekiel says, I don't know. But my I don't know is not necessary. Because you know better than me. You know. Can you imagine somebody asking you a question like that? Can this happen? And you say, you know. In other words, you, you take back, you give back the glory. You say, for you. Being who you are, you know. And it was true. God knew how to turn dry bones into an army, into a living army. I love that. There is hope, brethren. There is hope, Church of Christ. There is hope, my fellow Bacchus Lydian believers. We have hope to be turned back into a great army. Prepare for greatness. Even though you are weak, you better say, I am strong. Even though you are very black, please say,
say I'm in front. Even though you are down, because of the grace of God, we are up. We are great ame. It doesn't matter how far back as we are. It doesn't matter how much has been spoken about the church. It doesn't matter how much the devil has played games over the church. To an extent that the devil is more worshipped in the church than the Lord of the church. No problem. There is a plan of God. There is a plan of the Father to revive his army. And I want to tell you, God will not look for other people to do his work. He's still looking at the dry bones. His work will be executed by the dry bones. His will will be performed by the dry bones because he's able to raise the dry bones back to life. But we need to know how this work will be done. We need to know what is our part to play, what is required of us. Don't forget 1 Corinthians Chapter 3, verse 9, he says, we are co-workers together with God. In everything God does, we are co-workers. The moment he put us into existence, he gave us the grace to co-work with him. He gave us the power. And God is immutable. The word of God is immutable. He said, I have given you authority over, this, over the whole world, over the earth, over creatures. Yes. He works with us because he gave us the authority and his work does not change. He does not change. He's immutable. As he was, so he is. And that's how we ever be. And from his immutability, we get the access to demand what he did for David to be done unto us. To demand what he did in Israel to be done in our days to demand what he did to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to be done unto us. Why? Because he's immutable. He changes not. All people fear him and they do us the righteous things. The what things should be done according to him. He accepts them and he gives them the grace and he performs the same things he did before. Well, this is the time to see a great army coming out out of the power of revival. Revival great army. I want you to be part of this revival great army. Be part. It doesn't matter whether you are dead, whether you are rotten, whether you are dry bones. This move of revival which is coming is for all of us who are backsliders. It is for all backsliders or at any level of backsliding. Up to the dry bones <laughs> level of backsliding. That is the greatest level of backsliding. But I want you to know what should we do? How will he do this? When you get to know how he will do this work, you will know where to stand, what to play. I want you to look <coughs> at verse 9. At verse 9, okay, let us begin from verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was, no, there was a noise. And suddenly, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. There, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and he said to the, to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and the breath came from where? From four winds. Which winds? The, no, the, 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 the north wind, uh, the east wind, the west wind, the north and the south. Okay. And they lived. And stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to cry for, or oh, the first kind of grace in this story here, it is the grace of unity. Unity. 
dry bones need to get united. When we get united, he will report things we don't see. He will report his news. He has a store of sinews. He has a store of tenderness. But he waits for the church to get united. When you, are, when you, when you realize that you were born, seek where you connect to that bone. Don't seek biggest bones. Seek the bone of your kind. Supposing you, as I told you, the, your, finger, your, your finger bones. Don't dare to join to leg bones. It will not work. Let each one of us get connected to where he should be connected in a very simple way. Just the connection. It is all about unity. Desire to work together. Desire to co-work with different people, different callings. Desire to work with people of your own calling. Desire to cooperate. Let there be unity in the church. Desire to begin joining with one or two. Unity does not begin with thousands of people. It begins with two. And adds on the third one. The Lord says, if one or two or three come together, I am always in their midst. If they pray for anything, I will perform it. Unity began, begins with two. Then it goes to three. And so on and so on. The power that unites the two and fix the three is enough to unite as many number as possible because it is by grace to get united with somebody. The Bible says, can two walk together unless they agree? That grace of agreement, that grace of, of, of showing mercy to each other because many times people avoid or disintegrate or divide because of mistakes, because of unbecomings. Well, we need to learn to endure. We need to learn to, to, to pass via with each other. Somebody say amen. Okay. Now after unity, there is a battle of seeking or the breath. That's what I want to talk about so much. In the beginning, we saw when God formed the man. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. He breathed into man. And man became a living being or a living soul. The breath was near the hands. That touches me. The nose of God, I believe, he uses the nose to breathe. Because you can use the mouth to breathe or you can use the nose. But breathing is basically made, basically done by the nose. nose. God made a nose purpose for breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Now, it is so amazing that the revival breath, the any time breath is not near the hands of God. The Bible says, or oh, Ezekiel testifies, that the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord came upon me. Mukono wa mungu. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He took me to, to, to a valley, to the valley of dry bones, and he made me move around. The hand was near, but the nose of God was not there. The nose of God was in the east. The nose of God was in the west. The nose of God was in the north. The nose of God was in the south. Can you imagine that the nose of God in the end time is not near the hands? You know, God is infinite. God is so big. God is transcendent. He's beyond our imagination. He goes beyond. Now, can you imagine the breeze coming from the east wind? From the east? 
from the west. What does it mean? Because breath comes from the nose. For us naturally, as human beings, we know that the nose is always near the hands. If it, it were legs of the feet, I would say maybe because the nose of man is not near his legs. Is a di the nose is a distance from the feet. Now the Lord says, well, my hand is upon you, but the nose is not here. First we prophesy for unity. Okay, you have received the unity. Okay, now good. Now the grace of the breath is in the east and in the west and the north and south. That's where my nose is. Ah! And he says, it, it shall come by the wind. The wind. The east wind. There is something called the wind. East wind. North wind. South wind. West wind. Now, when we begin with the east wind, we we, we, we shall see that, as I told you, the east wind is a wind of trouble, problems, a wind of locusts. In Exodus chapter what? Chapter 10, verse 13, you will see Moses stretching his rod and locusts came how? By the east wind. The east wind sent locusts. And those locusts devoured in Egypt so much. It was terrible. E Lord, why do you send these locusts? What is the purpose of these locusts? To cause the people repent. To cause the people pray. God knows unless they are Certain circumstances, unless there are certain trouble, people will not be able to pray enough for revival. Now, when we go, let us go to Pharaoh. Yeah, in Exodus chapter chapter ten, and see what happened when the east wind came. When the east wind came, what happened? What were the consequences of the east wind? We want breath from the east wind. We want the wind to bring the breath of God. Now verse 13. Mm -hmm. So Moses did what? Okay, I can even read from. Mm -hmm. So Moses stretched out his road over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought the east wind. Yeah, we need breath from the east wind. On the land, all that day, uh -huh, and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested on all the territory of Egypt. They were very, very severe. Previously, they had been no such locusts as they, as they. No, there shall be such after them. That means they did a great damage that had never been in Egypt. For they covered the face of the whole earth. Okay. So that the land was darkened. And they ate every herb over the land. And all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. So there remaineth, remained nothing green on the trees or on the plants of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Then, that's what I want us to hear. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, immediately. Moses, come quickly. And he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now, therefore, please forgive my sin only this once and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away 
from me this death only. So he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord turned a very strong wind, west wind, which took the locusts away and blew them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the territory of Egypt. Aha! Uh -huh. What is the purpose of the east wind? The east wind to Pharaoh, it brought locusts, it brought trouble, and that trouble produced a very good thing. What is that? Repentance. Brokenness. Revival will not come until the hard hearts of ours are broken. And God uses his, his, his twin. By the way, let us read Psalms 48, verse 7, so that you really understand that the east wind is a wave of trouble. We can call it the grace of trouble. <laughs> the grace of trouble. Why do we call it grace? Because of the, out, the good outcomes. The good outcome makes it a grace, a kind of grace in disguise. Uh, when we read from, from mm -hmm, chapter, when we read in verse 40, where is that one? 48, verse 7, the Bible says, as when you break, you break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. An east wind is a destructive wind. Never, never forget. Never, never forget. So, the beginning of the story of our revival, the beginning of the story of turning uh, dry bones into, into a great army, is the east wind. It is all about calamity, problems, sorrow, things that disturb human being. With what purpose? With the purpose of bringing us to repentance. Repentance is very, very vital for the dry bones to turn into a great army into a revival great amen. Repentance. <coughs> what should we do? We should repent before the locusts come. We should break before the, the problems intensify. That is a, 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 a secret. It is good to know the secret. If God uses and it's too windy to begin the program of bringing breath, bringing life back to this body. Then we need to do what comes out of the east wind. Repentance. Breaking, praying for repentance. Praying for forgiveness. That's where we begin if we are to receive the breath. And I always tell people that we shouldn't seek back as fighting again. Hey, as if people seek it. We should not, we should not allow back as fighting to come our way. Oh, colonies, oh, sleeping, oh, spiritual slumber. Why? It is costly to restore life when it has been taken away. God used one breath to make a man. But when it comes to revival, it demands four breath. Why four? So that the enemy who overcame the one breath will not be able to prevail against the four breath. It is costly. You miss Jesus for one day, you take three days to see him. Revival is costly. Please don't back a slide. Coming back at that position is very costly. 
respect the level of the grace of God. The grace of God which is upon you. Respect the glory. It, it may not be very much pronounced. Maybe it is not known by many. Maybe people don't show much respect to that measure of glory upon you. But you are glorious. When you lose that measure of glory, to retain it, to get it back, ah, it's a big work. It comes by one breath. You need four breaths. And remember, the first breath is chaotic. Chaos is to wind. Is to wind breath. The first breath comes from the east wind. Okay, we must repent. And if you watch what we have gone through, I believe we have encountered enough problems. When you study about the last days, you will hear that the last days will be terrible days. It will be days of problems. People will fight each other. There will be uh, pestilences. There will be a, a number of chaotic things. Why? That is east wind. The story begins with the east wind. For God to bring the breath. Don't forget. In the beginning when God was making man, his hands were near his nose. Or the nose was near his hands like your nose. But in, river, in revival, in restoration of the lost life, the nose which gives us the breath is very far from the hands. That's why you can see the hand of God without a revival. You will see people getting saved without a revival because revival demands more than one breath. Even during Bacchus hiding, people get saved. People can get healed. Praise be to God. But receiving the whole life and become an army of God or the great arm of God, it demands for breath. Now, breath number two. That is the breath that comes from the west wind. This breath that comes from the west wind is all about deliverance. God is able to deliver us. God is able. That is what is written in Hosea. Hosea recognized that there are certain problems which come with the purpose of awakening the people of God. Not demonic, not a demonic work. No, no, there are certain problems which come upon the church, upon the people of God, from God, with the purpose of reviving us. When you read in chapter 6, Hosea, it says, Come, let us return to the Lord. People had gone away from the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. Let us go back to him. Let us repent. He has stricken. But he will bind us up. Why has he stricken us? Why has he torn us? We moved away from him. We are taken by the world. And then he says, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight as what? As a great army. You know, when we are before the Lord, we are a great army. When we are away from the Lord, we are nothing. That's why you hear people being bewitched. They are away from God. You can't be bewitched when you are before God. It is impossible. It is impossible. He protects us. I'm telling you, God is able to heal us. When we become born again, when we become children of God, Whatsoever touches us, touches us on permission of our Father. Nothing that comes our way by its will. The devil has no ultimate power over us. Why? We are children of God. You remember how Job suffered. The devil led Job to suffer so much. Losing his wealth, losing his good, his children, his 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 heirs, even the body, 
Well, it so happened by the devil, but on permission. I want born again to believe that our God is God Emmanuel. We must believe that God cares for us. We must believe that his spirit hovers over us. Nothing should enjoy us. No wolf, no lion will take us just anyhow, will eat us. No, you are not easily eatable because you are a child of God. You can be a child of God, but you are still a child of God. And God cares for you. God loves us. Even when we are away from him, he loves us. Even when we hurt him, he still loves us. God loves us. And for that matter, he has to revive us by all means. Revival must come by all means. No debate. The only thing which can, which can happen is this generation to lose it. If this generation does not wake up. If a generation does not wake up to receive the grace of revival, well, they can die and disappear. But a new generation will come and protect the, the, the revival. When you, when you read in, in 2 Kings chapter 22, 23, you will find a, a man called Josiah, a grandson of Manasseh, a great weak, witch, a sorcerer, a very bad man. A, a revival came. Ammon did not bring the revival. He also died like his father, Manasseh. But a grandson came, Josiah. And the revival came. You, 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 you and me, let us launch into the grace of revival. Let us pray. The problems that have come to us are there to awake us. God will send the, the west wind. What is that? That's the power of deliverance. God is able to deliver us from any calamity, from any challenge. God will deliver you. Many people are crying of the challenge of the, of the what? Of the trouble of poverty. The demon of poverty, yes. Poverty is a demon. But God is able to deliver you from poverty within a day. A Sunamite woman was delivered from poverty, from lack within one day. She became very rich within one day. Prisons or bondages of different kinds. Joseph in Egypt was delivered from he is from, from prison life one day. One day can change the situation. Let us believe God for deliverance. Let us believe God for the grace of our deliverance. Believe there is grace set for you to deliver you in that trouble, in that bondage. The Lord says, come unto me, all ye who labor and have laden, and I shall give you rest. But before you get the rest, take my yoke upon you. Yeah, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. We have to learn something. That's what you are learning now. What should we do after repentance? We must, we must seek, we must seek deliverance. We must seek the Holy Spirit for our deliverance. The power of the Holy Spirit for our deliverance. We have endured the challenges. We have prayed and repented. Now let us seek the Holy Spirit for our deliverance. The Lord says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to, to deliver those who are bound, to bring deliverance, to preach deliverance, to open the eyes of the blind, and to, to bring liberty to those who are, who, are, who are suffering from bondages. What should we do? We should do, seek the Holy Spirit. After repentance, let us believe that we are forgiven. Now, seeking the Holy Spirit. Seeking the communion with the Holy Spirit. Seeking the holiness. Worshiping the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Holiness Pursuing peace and holiness. You know, how do we seek the Holy Spirit? We seek the Holy Spirit by desiring to live holiness or to walk in the path of holiness. There shall be a way the fools 
shall not walk in that way. Which way is that? In, in, in Isaiah chapter 32. It is a way of holiness. Desiring to live a holy life invites the Holy Spirit. It is not only saying, Holy Spirit, come, come. Let us say, Holy Spirit, seven times. Ah, uh -uh, okay, you can do anything you want. But the most important thing to invite the Holy Spirit is the, determ is the determination to seek, a de the determination to live a holy life. To live a life of holiness. 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 Having or crying for the contrite spirit. The spirit that says, Lord God, help me that I don't do this again. God loves a contrite spirit. In Uganda, crying for the grace of not to do it again. Oh my God. Father, we thank you for the grace. Father, we pray that your grace covers us because your grace is sufficient. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Now, the north wind. The north wind is a wind of glory. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 4. We get the breath of glory. No, the wind brings glory. When you read in Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse, verse 4, you will see the creatures which came from the north wind. North wind, where are you? Uh -huh. Verse 4. Then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, and a great crowd with raging fire and engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it, and radiating out of its midst like the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also from within it, within, within it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had the four faces. And each one had four wings. Their, their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the soles of, the, of calves' feet. They sparkled like the color of a burnished bronze. The hands of a man were under their wings. wings in their four sides, and each of the four had faces and wings. Their wings touched one another. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their, of, of their faces, each had the face of a man, each, had, each of the four had the face of a lion, and on the, on the right side, each of the four had the face of an ox on the, on the left side, and each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces. Uh -huh. Their wings touched, stretched upward, two wings of each, one touched one another, and the two covered their bodies. And each one was straightforward. They went where, wherever the spirit wanted to go, and they did not turn when they went. And the last verse says, the appearance, mm -hmm. verse 28, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. Now, here we see the reason of why it demands four breath. Four breath. Why? The revived man has four special natures. He's not like the ordinary man. When revival comes, it, it transforms us into new creatures, special creatures. 
Now, you see here, he was talking, he, he talks about the four natures, the nature of man, that is one breath. That is the east breath. Man always lives in sorrow and problems. Then he talks about the nature of a lion, the nature of an ox, the nature of an eagle. And they were led by the Spirit of the Lord. These living creatures. You are a kind of these living creatures in the Spirit. A revival will not exist unless we possess those four natures. The nature of a human being, we are human beings like others. The nature of a lion, the Bible says the righteous are bold like a lion. Revival brings boldness. I'm telling you, the great army which is soon coming, the revival great army, yeah, you will see the boldness. You will see them very bold like a lion. And the nature of an ox, obedient, hardworking, humble, as an ox. That's where a man, a, 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 a Christian, oh, that's how a Christian humbles before a fellow Christian. We are not all the way lion first. Don't be a lion to your pastor. Don't be a lion to your husband. I'm a lion. Change the head. We must act wisely that we address matters of different kinds differently. That's why the demands for breath. One breath is in the east, another one west, another one comes from the north, another one comes from the south. And we must be spiritual, mounting high and high and high, like an eagle. You need these four natures. That is the secret of the four breaths. We cannot do the work of a revival church. We cannot perform the will of God of revival unless we possess the four breaths. The breath of man, the breath, the breath of a lion, the breath of, uh, of an ox, and the breath of an eagle. And then we shall be led by the Spirit of God. The Bible talks about these creatures that they were led by the Spirit of God. Those are the born again. Born again. Who are led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8, 14. As men are those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. What did Ezekiel see? He saw, he saw born again children of God coming from where? From the north wind. From that glorious presence of God. From glory. What am I saying? Glory is coming. Glory is coming. What, what should we do? <coughs> what should we do? Now, we should seek righteousness. I told you, holiness leads us to the Holy Spirit. But righteousness leads us to glory. Amen. You can be a silent holy man, but you will not be glorious until you begin performing works of righteousness. That's why you hear Elijah saying, Lord, I've remained alone. Oh, you are alone. Who, li who is living a life of holiness and righteousness? But I have 7,000 people who have not bowed before the devil. Where are they? The only thing they are not doing the works of righteousness. But they are holy. They are with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Maybe they are still under training. Maybe they are waiting for the right time. You know, righteousness, righteousness demands four things. Doing the right thing. At the right time. In the right place. And in the right way. Are we together? Doing the right thing. Uh -huh. At the right time. In a right place, in a right way. That is righteousness. 
Maybe they were waiting for the time for the works of righteousness. If we want to see the glory of God coming down, covering our nations, covering our generations, people to begin fearing the name of the Lord and revering the name of the Lord, we have to perform works of righteousness. That's why the Bible says, oh, the Lord says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. He says, how can he unto me, O ye, who do what? Who seek righteousness? Listen unto me. Hey, what are you saying? There are certain special communications which are given, or communications which are given to people of different natures, of different desires. When you read in Isaiah 51, you will see the Lord addressing people who love righteousness only. Listen to me. This is verse 1. You who follow after righteousness. You who seek the Lord, look to the rock, look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father. Look to Abraham. Look at the man of God who lived by faith. Look at Sarah. Do you want righteousness? Yes, yes look at Abraham. Look at Sarah. Look at Jacob. Look at Isaac. Look at Joseph. Look at Joshua. Look at David. Look at Samuel. Look at Daniel. If you want Russia to continue doing works of righteousness, learn from them. Be encouraged by them. There are certain communications which give, which God gives to a particular group of people. Here he was talking to only those people who love righteousness. The glory of the Lord cannot be manifested without the works of righteousness. How does the righteousness come? The righteousness will come when we address matters of life with the right face. A human matter, address it with the face of a human being. Hey. A, 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 a righteous matter, a ministry matter. Kingdom matter. You're addressing the, uh, people who are opposing the kingdom. Addressed with, a, with the face of a what? A lion. Then what about the, the, the matter of, of work? Business. Don't address business like a lion. Don't be over bold when you are doing work. When you are with your fellow workers. Don't be super bold. No, 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 no. Address business with the face of what? An ox. You are working with your leader. You are with your boss. Address that matter with the face of an ox. Don't be super bold before your boss, before your pastor. Don't scare him. Some people have women pastors. Don't scare them with very bold. Madam, pass what I'm saying. Tell me what I'm saying. And say it quickly. Don't do that. That is not righteousness. Righteousness comes when we address matters of life with the right first. When you are with your husband, don't address that matter with an ego's face. Speaking tongues in the bed, being very spiritual. Hey, please be a normal husband in the bed. Be a normal wife in the bed. Don't be super spiritual. You know, when we address things spiritually, all things with spiritual face, ego face, we become super spiritual. And that's not good. Shakarapakaya. No, no, no. Don't welcome visitors with tongues. You welcome many believers with tongues. Don't do that. That is not righteousness. There is no glory. When we don't address matters righteously. When it comes to worship, oh, what does he say? He says in John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, that God is seeking people. 
to worship him in spirit and truth. He's seeking them. He wants people to address him in the spirit. Don't address your uncle in the spirit.